Okay then gang, so sometimes in our projects we might not always want to write all of our code inside one single file because that would make the file really long and hard to manage. Instead sometimes we like to split our code into different files. Now this makes our code more modular and more reusable and it makes it much easier to update as well. Now we saw an example of this when I showed you this diagram before. So for example, we might have an initial entry TypeScript file or JavaScript file in this case called app.js, but then we can split our code into different modules or different files, if you like, like so. So we could have a file or a module that just contains code that handles forms. And we might have some kind of module that just contains code that handles database interactions. So we can use different files and different modules in TypeScript and then have Webpack combine all of those modules together into a single bundle file at the end. So how do we do this exactly? Well, first of all, let me create another TypeScript file and I'm going to call this forms.ts and the job, oops, let me get this right, .ts, the job of this file will be to contain code which is going to handle form submissions. Now we have a form right here, remember, with a few different inputs and we can see that right here, a name, an email and an age. So all we're going to do is handle the input from that form, but it could be any form in the future. So I'm actually just going to paste some code right here, which is from my GitHub repo. The link to that, don't forget, is down below. And all this is, is a function stored in a constant called form data. Now, if you're unaware of what any of this means, definitely check out the TypeScript tutorial. But basically, inside this function, we're taking in a parameter, which we're calling form, and that must be of type HTML form elements. So we pass in some kind of HTML form element that we get by querying the DOM into this thing right here, this form data function. And inside the function, we then create a constant called inputs, and we set that equal to the form we pass in, and we scope out a query selector to get all of the inputs from that form. So in our case, if we pass in this form right here, it's gonna grab all of these and store them in a collection right here called inputs. Now, right here, we say let value be of type, and then this is an object where we're saying it can have multiple different properties, and each property must be a string, and the value of each property must be a string as well. Now, we're ultimately going to be using this empty object to store all of the different key value pairs from our form. So... Then we take the inputs and we cycle through those using for each. We take each input in turn and then we take the values object right here and we create a property on this values object called input.id or it's not called input ID. We use the ID property from each input to create that property name. Now we have IDs on those name, email and age. So it's going to add a name property to the object an age property and an email property in turn. And it's going to set the value of each one of those to the value of each input. And that's going to be whatever a user types into these three things right here. Okay. So that's all it's doing. And then at the end, it's returning that values object. So now we have that and say we want to use it inside this file right here. All we need to do is say export like so, and that exports this function and marks it for import. So we can now import it into another file. So if I save that now and come over here, I could import it inside this file. And to do that, I'd say import, then curly braces, and inside curly braces, what do I want to import? Well, I want to import this thing right here, form data. So I'm going to copy that and paste it right here. And we need to say where this is from by saying from and then dot forward slash to say current directory because we're in the same directory as forms.ts. And then we want the forms file. Now we don't need to say dot js or dot ts. It doesn't matter. Webpack is going to figure that out for us and we'll set up Webpack shortly to do that. So now we've imported that, we could go ahead and use it. So first of all, we need to pass in a form to the function and I'm gonna query the DOM to get that form right here. So I'm gonna say const form is equal to documents.query select all. And we want the form elements and we need to place an exclamation mark right here to say this is definitely gonna be found. Otherwise TypeScript is gonna throw a wobbler later on. So now we have that form, we can add an event listener to it. And in fact, so you don't have to watch me write this out because 
like I said, this is not a TypeScript for beginners tutorial. All I'm doing is pasting this in from our repo. We have the form, add an event listener, submit event. So when we click on the button, we take in the event parameter automatically and we prevent the default action when this submit occurs. That means the page will then not reload as is the default behavior. Then we initialize a constant called data and set it equal to the form data function and pass in the form. So remember, whatever is returned from this is going to end up in this and that should be the values, right? So then we're just logging those values to the console. So whenever we now do all of this stuff right here, we should see all of those values logged as an object to the console. So should this work? Well, no, we get an error when I've saved that. And that's because it can't resolve forms. So we need to make an edit to the webpack config file right here in order for this to work because we're trying to import this TypeScript file and it doesn't know how to resolve it. Okay, so all we need to do is add a property. I'm going to add it above output, but you can add it anywhere inside this module.export and it's called resolve. And this is going to be an object in itself. And then we have an extensions property to say what extensions we want Webpack to be able to resolve. So this is going to be an array. And first of all, I'm going to say .ts and also .js. So JavaScript extension files and also TypeScript extension files as well. And now when we import something, it's going to know how to resolve that file right here. Okay. So we now need to restart this server down here because we've changed the webpack config file. I'm going to press control C and then yes to cancel out of this. And then I'm going to run npm run serve again. Fingers crossed this should work. And it looks like we don't have any errors. Cool. Looking good. And if we now enter in some information, so Mario, uh, the email Mario at the net ninja.co.uk, the age 35, press submit. We should see that object down here, which we do. So we have a name property, an email property, and an age with those values. So now we've seen how we can import different TypeScript files into our entry file. And we could do this in multiple different files as well. So we could then create a third file and import that into forms or index again. It really doesn't matter. Webpack is going to then bundle all of those up into a single file. And if we built this now, it wouldn't build this into two files inside the public folder. It would just combine everything and bundle them together into this one bundle.js file so that later on the browser only has one network request to make for that one single file instead of many different files that you might create in the source right here.